Hello everyone, I am Manish Sharma, a PhD student at the Oleshwar Institute of Materials Research and I'd like to welcome you to my talk Dancing Functional Embedding Theory for Excited States. So I guess I'm an imposter here because my work is mostly theoretical or computational in nature, but I've tried to keep things really simple. And um, yeah, so as you can see over here, um, what we are trying to do is we are trying to investigate the excited state properties of a molecule in the presence of an environment which could be periodic in nature, as you can see here, but it could also be a solvent. So, and the study of these excited state properties is um, of tremendous applications in various fields, which I guess you will know better than me, like solar cells, um, plasmonics, spintronics, etc. And what we can do is we can simulate properties like polarizabilities, excitation energies, hyperpolarizabilities, absorption spectra, high harmonic generation, and whatnot. But the important thing is that for our simulations or predictions to be reliable, what we want is to use some really accurate methods. Now, one such very accurate method, or a class of accurate methods, is called the correlated wave function theory methods. Now, the thing is that it is extremely accurate, and also it is systematically improved, but it has a lot of disadvantages. So it is extremely computationally expensive. And not only is it computationally expensive, but also it scales really badly. So imagine if a 10 atom system takes one day to simulate. Now it's not like a 20 atom system is going to be done in two days. It can scale as bad as n to the power 5. So it could probably take like 32 days to simulate a double size system. But also, what you cannot do is you cannot really use periodic boundary conditions, so you cannot really investigate surfaces as shown over here. So this is not really practical. And another method that we have is real-time time-dependent density function theory it is a mouthful, so we refer to it as RTP, DFT. And again, it is, um, it is a trade-off between computational cost and accuracy, and it also has a lot of advantages that you can really monitor the electron dynamics in real time under the influence of an external field. And it can be used to simulate nonlinear processes like high harmonic integration, but again, it is not suitable for periodic systems. So, the solution to all these problems is density function embedding theory. So here, for example, we have two hybrid systems like a solid gradient molecule or a cluster in the vicinity of a surface. Then what we really want to do is we really want to focus our attention only at the molecule that we call cluster here. And this region of interest we would like to simulate using a higher level of theory, the WFT methods that I mentioned earlier, while the environment will just are treated using a lower level method like DFT. Now, the way to do it would be to partition the density of the entire system into a cluster and an environment density, and hence the name density function embedding theory. And the influence of the environment on the cluster is taken in the form of an embedding potential, which is a function of the cluster and environment density. Now, there are several strategies to construct this embedding potential. The first is, here I consider a benzene molecule as my model environment and here I just relax the density of this benzene molecule on the environment uh, while keeping it isolated and then plug this density with the embedding potential and relax the cluster density and relax the cluster density in the presence of this embedding potential. Next, I have this method too. Here what I do is I take the total system at once I relax the density using a very low level method and then I subtract the isolated cluster density and use this subtracted or the difference density as the environment density and relax the cluster density in the presence of this embedding potential. Now the key thing here is that both the method 1 and method 2 are approximate in nature so you are not performing an exact embedding so you are not going to get the exact answer. So we have also have a method 3 which is the same as method 1 where we just relax the isolated environment density and then relax the cluster density but here we replace one approximate term and won't get into formulas but yeah we just replace one approximate term with an exact term and we get exact embedding. Now let's have a look at some results that we can obtain. So here I'll show you some excitation energies for solid molecules like acetone in water, methylene, cyclopropane in water or acrylene in water. 
obtained using a very reliable couple cluster second order approximate method. So CC2, so these in the green column is the uh, reference excitation energy, the first excitation energy for this molecule. And in the rest of the columns, you see the errors associated with different methods. So clearly, the method one performs really great. It gives incredibly low errors, like a maximum of 0 0.03 electron volts. A modification to method one, which the FMT actually stands for freedom thought. I won't get into much detail, but yeah, it was supposed to perform better, but it performs worse, probably because some error cancellation is happening in method one. So, and then the method two actually performs uh, really worse. But again, um, if I have a choice, I will pick method one, but again, even these methods are not that bad compared to just EFT, TDD, EFT results. Now next, um, I have a adding timing base pair, and I look at the first six excitation energies. Again, in the green column, I have the reference excitation energies obtained when I consider the total system using a very high level of theory. So it takes more time. And then, the, again, you see the same trend that with method when you get really low error errors with the maximum error of 0 0.053 electron volt. And again, in the method one with freedom thought is slightly worse and method two the worst. And again, I would like to stress here that the computational cost reduction is incredible here because, for example, you can imagine that if you run a calculation on the one of these molecules instead of the, um, both the molecules and you take the n to the power 5 scaling, you are getting great um, efficiency. And lastly, um, I would like to show you some results for the real-time TDDFT adoption spectra obtained using the method 3. Can you? Ah, okay. So, yeah, so in the purple, we have the reference RTP, the DFT adoption spectra obtained um, using a DFT, of course. And then the green curve is the method 3 that I said that was exact. Although you can see that there are very slight differences, and those are because the environment is considered to be um, fixed, at, the environment density is considered to be fixed at the ground state density. And also, I forgot to actually mention that um, we are talking about a benzene Fermi dimer here. So these are at a four angstrom separation. So we consider one of these as a cluster, the other as the environment. And with method three, we get really um, good results that it is, it is able to reproduce the features of the reference spectrum quite remarkably. And the method one, which had the approximations, um, we see that it does its job, but not that good. So these were some benchmark results that I have obtained till now. And yeah, so. Actually, uh, till now what I have shown you are just molecule and molecule embedding, but I also am currently working on molecule and periodic surface embedding. And yeah, so we also want to study some nonlinear processes like PGT simulations with a molecule on a surface. And yeah, so all this is in the progress and everything is implemented within the Turbo program package. And I'd like to acknowledge my professor, uh, Marek Sieta for his continuous guidance and support, the NOA for my salary, and Turbo Mode for the development support. And thank you for your attention.